Well, I'm out here today in Sebastian State Park. As you know, from my last few videos, we planted seagrass in the, uh, in the River Lagoon in Fort Pierce. Well, now we're over here with Ryan Brushwood and Diane Bolton. And uh, Ryan works for Sea and Shoreline. Diane Bolton is with the uh, Indian River Keepers. And we're analyzing this area to plant seagrass. And also, we're looking to also incorporate um, clams into these cages of seagrass to see if they complement each other and see how it grows. So uh, this is early stages. Today we're just scouting out areas. We'll be, be meeting with the uh, park manager later on this month and discuss the actual planting of the seagrass. But uh, this is going to be exciting. This is something the lagoon needs. As you know, there's starving manatees right now up in uh, the northern section in the River Lagoon. And yes, this project won't save any of those manatees that are up there now, but future generations could really depend heavily on the work that we're doing here today, so. Well, this is our first look at Sebastian Inlet State Park as far as putting seagrass. We're surprised, um, Ryan, he filled me in. There is some seagrass growing there, and we did see quite a bit. Now it's been heavily grazed. And don't think just manatees, we got sea turtles, there's sea urchins, there's other fish and birds that will be eating these, uh, eating the grass. But there is a colony of grass there. There's quite a few different varieties. I think, Ryan, you, you had one, you said it was endangered. I think they all are now, but that one was really interesting. Yeah, we saw a little bit of Halliduli, a little bit of Rupia, and a little bit of uh, Halophila johnsonii, which is a endangered seagrass. Um, it only occurs in southeast Florida in the Indian River Lagoon. So yeah. it's neat to see some of it here. I think we're pretty much at its northern uh, extent. It doesn't yeah. doesn't get too much farther north than this. Yeah. So. What are the names? I mean, people, you know, you use the technical names, but what are sure. the... Sure, so we saw some shoal grass and uh, widgeon grass, which are very common throughout the Indian River Lagoon, probably two, if not the two most common, um, they're up there, you know. And then uh, Johnson seagrass is the Halophila species that we saw. Okay, so anyway, we're looking at areas to sit there and plant seagrass to help the colonies really start up a nice seagrass colony here. We'll use it in the cages. The cages will help protect the seagrass. And then we're going to need your help. We're going to need a lot of cages. The more cages, the less pressure there is around the cages. What happens is seagrass, it grows roots underneath the cage and starts sprouting up around it. But if we only have one or two cages, those cages will be, as soon as something sprouts up around it, they're going to get eaten. So our goal is hopefully like 30 are more cages in this area to really get a colony established. It's amazing what they did in Crystal River, and uh, hopefully we're going we're to try to do it here. You know, we may not save that many, uh, you know, manatees this year, but with this effort, we'll save them in the futures to come. So. Sure. Yeah. No, I couldn't say it better than that, Pete. Um, yeah, anything helps, and uh, like we talked about, there's there's safety in numbers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the more grass that you can get going, it's just going to do nothing but improve water quality and, and create a more sustainable habitat so the more we can get the better all right like i say i'm going to fill you all in more also I'm going to, if you all want to help with this project there's going to be an opportunity for anybody who wants to help us with this project i will share that on our next video until next time this is pete Inc. we'll see you later